Welcome to What the F***. I'm your host, Jim Tu, also known as the Sunnyvale Streaker. Let's get a preview of tonight's show from Timothy Walton in our legal department. Timothy, what do we have in store for tonight's show? Hello, Jim. On this episode of What the F***, we'll learn that historians predict the future and find that being around depressing people is depressing. Then we'll discuss weird American habits and exciting fields of study. Back to you, Jim. Hey, thanks, Timothy. I'll see you at the end of the show. Hey, let's meet tonight's panel who think they're earning time off for community service. In the far chair, she's cuter than a baby harp seal getting clubbed by an Inuit toddler. It's library worker Jenna Christ. In the middle chair, it's international woman of intrigue, Cynthia Gregory. She's so mysterious that Mayan civilization ended trying to figure her out. <laughs> In between them, it's the host of KMET's only live show, John Wants Answers. It's John Bink. If probing questions was asphalt, people will watch him get laid on a freeway on a hot summer's day and hold their noses. Finally, joining us from an undisclosed remote location, it's attorney at law, Alex Clark. If legal acumen was a courtroom, criminals would come in and out of him daily. <laughs> Issue number one, can you predict the future's path with just math? Numbers never lie, but can they see the future with a clear eye? Peter Turchin, a professor at the University of Connecticut, is, dri is the driving force behind a new field called Cleodynamics, a study where scientists and mathematicians analyze history in the hopes of finding patterns they can use to predict the future. Scientists use math to crunch numbers now made available from the digitizing of statistical data to spot recurring patterns over time in hopes of anticipating the next recurrence. One example they use is the spikes in political violence that have occurred in the U.S. every 50 years, in 1870, 1920, and 1970, and possibly 2020. I think we have an example how they use this t beneficially here. Yeah, hang on. Uh, doesn't work for me yet, but uh, anyway. Hey, Jenna, predicting the future with math, you buying this or not? In, in the broad strokes, yeah. Okay. I mean, not like what any one person is going to do, but, you know, they, there were larger trends that, that tend to happen. Right. So, yeah. So, 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 you, so you, you think this, this is a doable thing? Yeah. All right. But I mean, I think there would be like variance, and like there was the what eighteen twenties spot where like there should have been a lot of violence, but there wasn't because there was prosperity. So I mean, there's there's variables that could make the interpretations well, move. You you, you missed the run on the first bank of the United States in eighteen twenty, oh. and the political crisis between Andrew Jackson and the bank and the, and Nelson Biddle. I, I was busy doing other things, like not being alive, sorry. Oh. <laughs> or, or the riot of the 6th year anniversary of the War of Battle of New Orleans. <laughs> I oh. missed so much. You missed so much. You, you fell asleep in history class, didn't you? Yeah. All right. Okay. But, but you're buying this, right? Within, within reason, okay. generally. On a macro level, you're buying this. Macro, okay. totally. All right. Cynthia, you, you, did you ever read uh, Isaac Asimov's uh, Foundation Trilogy? Actually, I did. Okay. This sounds a lot like this, right? Yeah, it sure does. But the um, but you know, I think mathematics always has um, uh, propensity to error. Um, right. So you know, I think we're only time will tell. It might take us another few millennia to actually have collected enough data to do, to know if these uh, predictions are actually accurate. But you know, at the end of the day, all I really care about is you know, um, can I do I know if I'm going to have a job tomorrow? Or you know, I think you might be curious to know, or, you know, could these scientists predict when you're going to get laid next? No, uh, I, I think they said, I think it's after the sun goes nova. Uh, okay, I, all right, I, I so we have a few millennia to actually collect some data, see if they could do no, the prediction I think correctly. A few lot, you, need, you, need a, you need a data point. So you, need, you, need, you, need, uh, you need a spike uh, okay. in the data. Just okay. a, zero's well, a data point. That's true. Yeah, but you need a spike in the data. Because you know, if it's all zeros, you just assume all zeros. But You'll be spiked soon. I'll be spiked soon, is that it? All right, but uh, so, so do you think this is more of a, so you think this is actually 
a science and that they can spot the recurring pattern or are these patterns just more coincidences? No, I actually do believe that there are patterns and uh, there is enough data that you can kind of see some patterns just like um, you can look at climate data that has that we've collected um, by looking at sam core samples of ice that can uh, go back thousands and thousands of years. Actually, I think millions. N yeah, millions. actually I know I was listening to something yesterday on the radio where they said salt crystals can hold um, in Salt Lake, the Salt Lake can actually hold things that are you know 250 million years old so they can get some different kinds of information there so there's there's lots of data the question is you know so much data can you process it and do we have enough to really make a good prediction okay. and validate it okay so you're buying this too yeah hey, I am actually John what, what's your take I'm reminded of the Franklin mint they had some wise <laughs> words um, and I'll I'll read them to you now past performance is not an indication <laughs> of future potential values okay so, so you, 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 you bunk them right I don't think you can predict um, based on timelines. Like every 50 years, this happens. I don't think you can predict based on that. I think there are economic cycles right. that everything ties into economic cycles, I think. Like a, a business lot. cycle, right? When the economy is good and the general population is doing well, right. you're going to see less violence. But as you know, there's tough times, you're going to see more crime. People got to you know, steal to feed their kids or something like that. Well, that's true, but can you predict it before it happens? I think that's the, that's the, that's what we want to know, right? As far as you can predict the economy, and oh. I don't know how far that is. Well, that's true. Hey, Alex, uh, wherever you are, what's your take on this? Jim, I really can't reveal where I am. I can only say the initials of where I'm located, LA. So it's actually quite a secret. And I'm also glad that you brought up the banking crisis of 1820s. That always brings up some cheap laughs. That's so it's a good source of material. Uh, in any case, I'm really excited that you brought up the foundation because I'm actually kind of doing the whole Isaac Asimov look. I got the big uh, mutton chops, well, I'm sort of proto mutton chops, and I got the big thick glasses. This is in commemoration of Isaac Asimov. It really speaks to my inner nerd. By the way, when I was getting beat up in seventh grade, if I may digress. <laughs> in seventh, eighth grade back in Wisconsin in junior high, and I was reading the Foundation series. I never knew it was going to be a national, tel well, this isn't a national television, but, the, you know, the five or six viewers are going to see this, and I get to talk about the Foundation on television. This is amazing. So, take that, jocks, you know. So, that, I'm sorry, did you have a question at the end of this? Or? <laughs> I actually did, but you know, I kind of got I kind of got lost in the image of you reading a book while you're getting a Melvin. That's actually pretty impressive. You can just keep reading a book while some bully's giving you a Melvin. That's kind of a what is what's a Melvin? Melvin? Yeah. Uh, you you know as a nerd. Come on, don't don't don't, don't do not feign ignorance, Mister Smarty Pants, or lack of Smarty Pants over your forehead, guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Alex, I think you, you managed to filibuster the rest of the segment. So, <laughs> okay, from predicting the future to spreading ill humor. Issue number two. If your mind is not at ease, can it spread like a disease? Dr. Gerald Hefnell and Jennifer Hames of the University of Notre Dame, go Ramblers, have published a new study that finds depression and the emotions associated with it can be contagious. They found that the gloomy mindset of students vulnerable to depression can be catching, making their friends more likely to suffer the same condition six months later. The reverse is also true. Those who were with friends not prone to depression experience decreases in their own levels of negative thinking. But you know what re else reduces negative thinking? This. In the middle, I'm best Yeah. Hey, I Yeah. Motherfucker, fuck that fucking world, and my new band is called. Sis kill. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, it, it cures my depressive thoughts because it's more replaced with thoughts of pain. But uh, all right, hey, Mr. Vink. Yes. M mood is contagious. If I agree or disagree. I remember in college, people would always be saying, "Hey, man, you're harshing my mellow." Well, you buying it? Yeah. I mean, if you're uh, with a bunch of downers all the time, I mean, how can you? Be happy. Okay. Do, do you ex can you attest from personal experience if this is true or not? Um, I know people who are cynical and who are all cynical around you, and they're like annoying and bring you down, and you just talk smack about them when they're not there. Okay. Okay. So you're buying this. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hey, Cynthia, does this explain why women like moody men? 
Uh, well, I can't speak for all women. Okay. Um, I can only speak for myself, but I'm, I like happy, optimistic people, and my friend, it's my circle of friends tend to be happy and optimistic. Okay. And Is that because you're happy and optimistic? Absolutely, or, or and I attract happy and optimistic people. Very rarely do you see a um, kind of a grumpy person hang around me. At least they're not grumpy for long. Okay. All right, all right. All right then, Jenna, just explain why married men tend to be so gloomy. <laughs> Because their wives are gloomy too? Is that what you're saying? I don't know. I just, it's just an observation I've had. <laughs> Misery loves company. <laughs> I guess. I have no idea. But, but you buying this? You buying this uh, thesis? Thesi? Uh, well, yeah, like the others said, um, both positive and negative kind of feelings can affect the people around you. So, yeah. What do you tend to spread to your friends then? <laughs> Horror and sadness. Oh, okay. So, so you're, the, you're, you're the Debbie Downer of your group, right? I don't know. She will not get an invitation yeah, she, to my house. There you go. Okay. I haven't yet. See? Hey, Alex, it's true. Uh, uh, but your, your, three your three roommates in college committed suicide. So what's your take on this? Uh, well, I always thought lawyers are kind of um, naturally gloomy people, cynical people. So, you know, our profession is, is, is kind of a... It's kind of a bummer of a profession. So, um, as to uh, whether that spreads, makes us prone to illness, I think actually we thrive on on kind of the gloominess. I don't um, know. Maybe Timothy will probably pipe in in a little bit. But that, that's how you got straight A's through undergrad, right? I got straight A's. Yeah, no, okay. I got straight T's. That's why I got went to law school. Oh, uh, that's pretty much it. Hey, I'll throw this out to the group in general. Uh, they use college roommates as their survey, as their sample. Do you think that's a, a accurately representative sample, or is it just kind of disproportionate? No, it's disproportionate, for yeah. sure. Okay. Do young people tend to be happier or sadder than the general population, in your opinion, John? You know, I couldn't say it, because you, so you have some kids who are, like, getting drunk all the time and partying, and they seem kind of happy. And then there are the kids who are trying to do well in school, who seem to be sad. <laughs> what were you, what were so you like, then? I was on the sad side, probably. Okay. I didn't get to party that much. All right. All right. All right. All right let's see here. Uh, does, does this explain the saying, misery loves company? I'll throw it out to the group. Apparently. All right. Right? Yeah. All right. Any, any, any last comments, Alex? We've got about 30 seconds left for the segment. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of depressed now. Are you? Are you? <laughs> but you're alone. I am alone. I get invited to your show in person. I gotta be a remote. Well, you know, Jenna did put that restraining order, so we have to keep you at least 400 feet away from her. So, um, <laughs> all right, Alex. Don't worry, we'll get you back one of these times in person. Anyways, all right, on to our first break, and we're back from our first break. And by the way, the men's room toilet's a little over. Plugged, but anyway. Oh, issue number three: Do habits of the USA befuddle those in the UK? A writer for the BBC, which I found out today is a government-sponsored media outlet in Britain, in addition to an acronym for one of my anatomical body parts, has a top ten list of American habits that befuddle them. The list includes eating breakfast together, getting a doggy bag at restaurants, ordering large portions of food and drink, drinking milk, public displays of affection, whooping, spontaneously talking to strangers, sending personalized holiday cards, baking, and flossing your teeth. You know what didn't make the list? This. Fastest hot dog shooter. Boys, I probably, I, I've never seen nobody be able to do this. I can do it quick. Okay? I'm just saying. Yeah, apparently, <laughs> apparently swallowing spitting wieners back out doesn't befuddle the Brits at all, but mm. yeah, who knows? All right. That might have been a Brit. Yeah, there you go. Hey, uh, John, you're, you're, you're Canadian. Um, are, are these habits of Americans strange to you? I consider Canadians to be halfway between American and British. Right. right? Um, the only thing I do in that list is floss. I don't do any other things in that list. Okay. But do you find those other, do you find the habits strange? Um, Even though you don't do them, do you find them strange when you, that other people do them? Uh, the talking to strangers. Right. Yeah, I'm not into that. You're I don't not understand into that? that. No. Okay. Um, eating, you know, the huge portions, not my thing. Yeah. I don't get it. All right. The rest seem like normal. Like, okay. why would you floss your teeth? Uh, well, maybe that's a comment on the Brits, right? <laughs> yeah. Have Alex, you seen their teeth? Alex, you lived in a foreign country for a while at, while the statute of limitations was about to expire on whatever charge you were with. What, what's your take on this? 
Uh, it's very interesting. I, I did read this article like uh, a month ago, and I, I found it quite fascinating because I, I, I lived in East Asia, and I had a lot of encounters with uh, British people. Uh, two areas that I thought was very interesting, although it was more because of my wife is a mail-order bride, and she's from uh, East Asia, uh, Russia, and she thought two things was very strange about Americans was, one, talking to strangers unprompted, because people would just come up to you in the elevator, if you're in the elevator, and they'd start talking about their whole lives or the weather, and the other thing is whooping. I love to whoop. I, I assume this means like, woo-hoo, something like that, right? Like you're in the car and you're like excited about something. The first time I did that, my mail-order bride, uh, she was kind of, um, she was kind of surprised by my whooping. She was like, why did you do that? She was kind of taken aback. So I don't think it's just British. I think it's actually most cultures find uh, certain things on that list very baffling about Americans. We're a mysterious people. Okay, yeah. All right, all right. I will go to the all-American girls. Um, Jenna, uh, what do you, what's your take on this as an American, allegedly? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> actually, the whooping thing, it's, it's weird. It seems weird to me when I see other people doing it, and then, like, a situation comes up, and, like, you're like, woo! You're like, why did I do that? So I, I can understand both sides of that one. All right, okay. But I, it was weird that they thought, like, drinking milk was strange, that they thought eating breakfast with your family was strange. Yep. Does that say more about the Brits than it does about Americans? Yeah, I guess. And they don't bake? Come on. I mean, what if you want, like, a muffin or something? Oh, I thought that said they don't bathe. Okay. <laughs> just, you know, okay well, I, Europeans, I don't think, bathe as often as Americans, but... Uh, Cynthia, as an international woman of intrigue, I know you've met people from all parts of the world. What's your take on these list of American habits? Well, I think that the Brits have a problem. They just, uh, first of all, I, I totally get they don't, why they don't get why we floss. Have you seen their teeth? Yeah. And yeah. then the other thing is they're upset because uh, we uh, are friendly to people, including strangers from other countries. I mean, what's wrong with being friendly? I mean, we've been accused of being arrogant, starting wars. People hate us because we're smart and we're wealthy. And they're upset when we try to make friends. You know what I say? F*** them. Oh, so. I have to bleep that. I have to bleep that in post there, Cynthia. Oh, I'm sorry. I had to give you something else Did to you, do. Do you, do you kiss your mom with that mouth? <laughs> Not anymore. Not anymore. Okay, there you go. All right. So uh, that or, cause I'm, you know what, what surprised me? Didn't make the list. Metric system. <laughs> I just thought that you know I thought they'd be befuddled, that, but maybe the did the Brits have the imperial weights and measures? No, no, they're they're metric. They're metric. They, yeah, they, it's they, only they, America that has. They don't have the pint miles. Well, I only mean, on beers. Yeah, oh. they measure beers. Right. Yeah. Or or pounds? Isn't that their currency, the pound? Never. No, mind. the stone. <laughs> they weigh people in stones. Isn't that isn't that an imperial measurement? I don't know what that is. Okay. All right. Oh, well, well. All right. Hey, from habits that bewilder us to a wacky syllabus is. Anyways. Issue number four, are those degrees a little wacky? LiveScience.com perused a list of degrees available at colleges and came up with their list of unusual degrees. The list includes puppetry from the University of Connecticut, professional nanny from Sullivan University in Kentucky, pop culture bowling green, which apparently does not have a bowling degree. Gunsmithing at Lassen Community College. Fermentation Sciences at Appalachian State University, which I assume is how they make moonshine. Canadian Studies at Duke, Go Blue Demons. Decision Making at Indiana University. The Beatles at Liverpool Hope University in the UK. Sex at the University of San Francisco State University. I got a PhD in that. And Auctionary at Harrisburg Area Community College. What major didn't make the list? This one. Hey, Cynthia, your, your, your ex-husband's a really talented guy, but I bet you he liked to bring his home, work home with him, right? Yes, he did, and we both enjoyed it. Oh, did <laughs> All right. Hey, all right, so uh, weird majors, good thing or a bad thing, Cynthia? I think weird majors are fine. I mean, there's a special interest group and a magazine for everything, so why not a college major? You know, I'm pretty confident that there's probably a, com a uh, comic book major out there. Mm -hmm. There's probably, you know, Play-Doh modeling, you know. Uh, probably even predicting the future using math. I bet yeah, that's a thing know, too. Probably good, yeah, probably good thing. <laughs> Would you have picked any of these majors back back when you were in college uh, last year? 
Um, you know, it's possible that I might have done uh, puppetry but just oh. because I think that I have an attraction now in my later life to theater and the performing arts, and that might have been an interesting way to do ex uh, expression of my artistic side. I was about to say, afraid to say you're going to have a strange attraction to puppets, but okay, there, there you go. <laughs> Only yeah. Muppets. Only Muppets. Not puppets. <laughs> hey, Alex, uh, you're a lawyer. Uh, would you have uh, foregone your law degree in favor of one of these uh, other majors? You know what, honestly, uh, I actually think that I could have taken one of these as an undergrad, gotten better grades, and then um, gotten to a better law school. So, anything in particular? Um, I don't know. Uh, gunsmithing sounds like you no. Know, uh, pop culture, sex. Actually, I don't know. Fermentation study sounds interesting. I could like do moonshine or yeah, that'd be that'd be probably. That'd be like a good segue to being a lawyer. I'd be like the most popular person in law school. You know? <laughs> there you go. Still in, the, in my, back of my room and everything. No law review. Brew your own Brew stuff. Your own there stuff. you go. There you go. Brew my own still. Did I say that? There you go. There you go. Okay. Shut up. Shut up. Uh, let's see here. Uh, do these, uh, the fact that these majors exist, do they, are they uh, an in indication that our colleges have jumped the shark, or are they what colleges are for? <laughs> uh... I do wonder, like, what is the supply and demand of these things? You know, like, what is, I mean, how how much demand is there for puppetry, really? I, I don't know. I'm hoping our <laughs> fact checker will research that. Fermentation studies, I think there's a lot of demand for that. Okay. But some of these other things, I don't know. Or gunsmithing? Yeah. Like, being able to make your own gun is kind of important That's these days. That's pretty cool. There you go. Cool skill to have. Yeah. Um, but even pop culture, I guess they go into advertising or something. Yeah. Even though I will give the community colleges a, on this list a pass because I think they're more trade school majors. I, I would, but, you know, like welding or whatever. But Auctioneering. Yeah. John, well, what's your take on this? I think a lot of these majors uh, don't sound that crazy. I think a lot of them you can get a job with. Except for the, the, the Beatles one, I understand. Okay. Do I you mean, think you can get a job of pop culture? Well, yeah, writers. I think, you know, entertainment writers take a course in that. Sex. Um, when Canadian I to, studies. <laughs> Canadian studies? Why wouldn't you study Canadians? I, People study Europeans. Because they're boring. They're not, <laughs> oh, we have a very interesting <laughs> history full of strife and overcoming the odds of cold weather. Really? Okay. Well, well what about the sex <laughs> major? What job do you imagine getting with a sex major? Um, someone who's in um, health. Like okay. a health person. Are you sure? Um, what if you're running the uh, the clinics for the uh, sex workers? That'd be a good course to take. There's a clinic for sex workers? I'm sure, that, yeah. You, you mean know, prostitutes? I didn't want to say that. There's many <laughs> sex workers who need assistance and someone who works in like a clinic. That you're aware of, right? Are you speaking from first-hand experience? I saw the news. <laughs> <laughs> would your company, who I believe's name is prominently displayed on your shirt, would they hire anybody with any of these majors? Um, I, 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 um, uh, <laughs> no. Not, well, I'm just I'm go ahead and say no. We have, a, we have a wide. We're hiring a wide variety of people, ranging from marketing and sales to engineering. So but no I'm sex sure. majors, right? No, no, I, no puppetry majors. I knew a girl who interned in puppetry. Okay, but yeah. and what's but, she doing now? Taking your order at Starbucks? <laughs> no, this puppetry intern is now working as uh, engineering at Apple. Well, there Computer, you go. Good so. for her. Yeah. All right, we are done with the segment. Uh, on to our second break. How we doing? And we're back from our second break. And now we're at the fact-checking stage of our show, and this is where we find out where we went wrong during the course of the show. And for that, we joined Timothy Walton in the legal department. Hey, Timothy, how we do today? Well, you certainly all kept me very busy. There were a number of things that I needed to look into. Uh, Jim, uh, I need to point out to you that the British currency is no longer the pound. It has been the euro for decades. Wait a minute. I, that, I don't buy that. But uh, okay. Okay. Euro. No, I think he's. I think he's pulling my leg. I think not. Uh, you did ask me to look into demand for puppetry, uh, and it turns out that there is a huge demand because America is constantly needing to install dictators in countries around the world. Oh, so they'll they'll end up joining the State Department then, right? Exactly. The cushy government job. Damn cushy government jobs. Uh, also, I need to point out, Alex... Your grades would not have been better had you studied gunsmithing. Sorry. 
No, but he probably got all straight A's because his, his roommates in college all committed suicide. Therefore, he gets straight A's. Isn't that right? I, I actually want to apologize to my law school. My law school wasn't that bad. I mean, the uh, the DeVry Law School in Grenada was not is not a bad school. <laughs> Aren't you on Aren't the you cover on the of their cover alumni of their alum uh, alumni directory, Alex? Very good one, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't have a comeback on that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> what else we got, Timothy? Well, we could speculate about whether his study of gunsmithing would have led to a higher degree of fatalities among his roommates. Oh, that's true, but uh, you know, um, but he wasn't a he wasn't a gunsmith major, unfortunately. He was just moody. If you say so. <laughs> what else you got? Uh, I need to point out to Cynthia that people around the world don't hate Americans because of our brains and wealth. They love us because we're obnoxious. It's a thin line between, between love and hate, I guess. Hate, I guess. <laughs> you would know. <laughs> you were just waiting for that. You were waiting for the echo to die just a little bit of that. But, uh, actually, actually we, I would. Know. I would know. <laughs> we got anything else, Timothy? We got about a minute and a half. Uh, my research indicates that John does in fake. Run that by us again. John claims not to have done any of the things on the list except flossing. Oh, yes. So, so uh, you're not buying that? No. In fact, my research indicates that he did plenty of partying when he was younger, and he did indeed bait. Oh, man. I well, Dang echo. I couldn't hear that at all, Timothy. He did plenty of what? Car being? What? What? Partying. Oh, he was a party animal. I think he's suggesting I bake brownie with oh. marijuana inside it, or the Mary Jane. Oh. And then I got high from eating the brownies. That's what oh, he's is that a, con is that a confession, though? No, no, no. I'm just <laughs> well, no, I, coding the echo. I bet you drank milk with it, too. Well, if you have brownies, you got to have milk, right? That's what I'm saying. See, he admits it. Do you know that only white people can drink milk? No, what? I didn't know that. Everyone else is black and tolerant. Yeah, that's, true. that's true. Hey, Timothy, we got 30 seconds left. What else? You got any? You, you got you, whatever else you got? Smoke them. Uh, well, Alex said that being a lawyer is a bummer of a profession. I would just like to point out that being a legal secretary is even more of a bummer of a profession. That's right. You have to work underneath lawyers. Hey, anyways, hey, Timothy, we are out of time. So, hey. For uh, anybody who wants to follow us or send us comments, uh, email, Twitter, and I think Facebook eventually will get underneath the screen somehow. So, uh, otherwise, thank you for watching. Later!